So in this video, we'll be going over another example of a block sitting on an incline, except it's going to be a little different than what we've dealt with in the past. So in this problem, it's very similar to the last few examples, except that the incline has decreased to 20 degrees instead of 60 degrees. We're given the coefficient of static friction is 0.6, and then we're asked, does the block move? So this is the new kind of twist to what we've dealt with prior to this, where we have more of an open-ended question. So we have to figure out, well, does it move? That's the first thing we have to figure out. And so what dictates whether it moves or not is whether the force of static friction can counteract the weight force that is pulling the block downwards. So if it can, the block won't move. But if the weight force is greater than the static frictional force, then the block will move. And at that point, we would need to determine what the acceleration of the block is if it's able to move. So as with every problem, we're gonna start by defining our coordinate system. Since we are having motion either having motion or either attempted motion at an incline we want to use a tilted coordinate system so anytime you're on an incline or a decline and the motion's going to be happening on that incline or decline you're always going to want to tilt your coordinate system so that it matches the angle of the incline so here is the angle so our coordinate system is at an angle of 20 degrees i'm going to choose this up direction to be positive y and this downward direction to or down at an angle to be positive x and so what's our system in this case well our system is the block so we want to draw a free body diagram for the block We'll start with the weight force. The weight force always points straight downwards. It happens to be at an angle this time because we've tilted our axis, but for a non-tilted axis, it would just point straight down or straight down in the negative y direction, but it always points straight down no matter what. What other forces do we have? Well, we have the frictional force that's going to be opposite the direction of motion or attempted motion. So it, the block, if it is going to move, it's going to, it's going to go down the incline. So the frictional force is going to be in the negative x direction. And we'll keep that as static for right now. And then the final force is the force that is being exerted by the incline on the book, and that's the normal force, and that points up. Should that be drawn longer than the weight force vector or shorter? Well, since the normal force, since there's no motion in the y direction, the, the sum of the forces should equal zero, and since the weight force is at an angle, the normal force is only going to be balancing a component of the weight force. So that means we want to draw the normal force shorter than the weight force vector. And that's F sub N. Step is to break your forces up into components, any that are at an angle. So the weight force is the only force at an angle. So here's the X vector component. Here's the y component, so that's w y and w x. So now we need to determine the angle. So for our incline, we've got a triangle that looks like this, 90 degrees, 20 degrees. And then for our weight triangle, something looking like this. There and there. This is 90 degrees. So now we match up the 90s 
and we find that this angle right here is theta equals 20 degrees. So now we can break our weight force up into its components. So using our trig rules, we find that the x component is the opposite side, so it's equal to the weight times sine of 20 degrees. And then the y component is the adjacent side, so it's the weight times cosine of 20 degrees. And then this is 20 down there. So to round out the, the first part of the problem solving framework, what are we looking for? Well, we're looking for uh, the force of static friction and whether that is less than the maximum static frictional force. If it is less than, the block doesn't move. If it is greater than, then we're gonna need to solve for the acceleration. But this is the first thing that we need to solve for. So coming down here, we can fill out our force table. So we have, now we have to choose, we have in the, we have three forces. We have a normal force, we have a static frictional force, and then we have a weight force. And now we just fill in based off of our free body diagram. All of our forces come from the free body diagram. So the normal force, do we know that? We're just gonna keep it as just F sub N. That is entirely in the Y direction, so it has no X component. For the frictional force, it's entirely in the negative direction. Negative S sub S, and that has zero Y component. And then we already found our X component, or in our Y component of the weight force, so we can just fill those in. Keeping in mind direction, so the X component of a weight based off of our free body diagram, it's right there. That is in the positive x direction, so we have w sine of 20, and for the y direction, that is in the negative y direction, so we have negative w cosine of 20 degrees. Always, as always, we're going to be making use of the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to mass times acceleration in the x direction, as well as the sum of forces in the y direction equals mass times acceleration in the y direction. The final we're going to use is the static frictional force is less than or equal to the normal force times the coefficient of static friction, which in the problem we're given as mu sub s is equal to 0 0.6. So now we're going to come down here and we're going to implement our solution. We're going to start with summing the forces in the y direction. We know that there is no acceleration in the y direction because the block's not moving in the y direction. So the sum of the forces must sum to 0. And now to substitute into the left hand side of equation 1, all we do is go up to our table here and we pull our value straight from that. So we have the normal force plus the y component of the weight force, which is minus w cosine of 20 degrees equals zero. So we know that the weight force, is, or the normal force is equal to the weight force times cosine of 20 degrees. So our next step is to figure out and answer the question of the problem. We're asked whether or not the block moves. So if the block doesn't move, that means the acceleration in the x direction is zero. So the sum of the forces in the x direction would equal zero. And then we're just gonna pull straight from our table this x values. And we have minus S sub S plus W sine of 20 degrees is equal to zero. So the frictional force needed so that the block doesn't move equals the weight force times sine of 20 degrees. But what we just found was the frictional force needed for the block to not move. We don't know if that is actually the frictional force 
or the maximum frictional force that we have based off of our coefficient of friction and our normal force. So the question we need to ask ourselves is this frictional force needed less than the maximum static frictional force we can have based off of our values. And so we can substitute these in. We can use equation three for the static frictional force. So we have W sine of 20 for the frictional force needed. And we're wondering whether that's less than the, nor the static frictional coefficient 0 0.6 times the normal force W cosine of 20. So the weights cancel out on both sides and the question is, is sine of 20 degrees less than 0 0.6 times cosine of 20 degrees? And what you find plugging in your calculator is we have 0 0.34 is less than 0 0.56. So the block will remain stationary since the maximum static frictional force is greater than the frictional force needed. And so we've already answered the last question in this problem is what is the frictional force? And that frictional force is the weight force times sine of 20 degrees, which can also be written as mg sine of 20 degrees.